In this episode, Picard, episode seven, Dominion. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back again with Megan Dory for our continued exploration of Picard season two. Today is episode seven, Monsters. Megan, what intrigued you or perhaps not about this episode? I found this one a little bit of a slog to get through. I mean, I think they were dealing, of course, with interesting subject matter, very important character development, but I found all of the time spent deep in the recesses of Picard's mind just dragged on a little bit, and I missed a lot of what was going on with the other characters and the other threads in this story. But Tom, what was your overall take on the experience of Picard and Laris in Picard's subconscious? Part of me says it's always interesting when you get these, it's always interesting when you see what has impacted us and what has Mm -hmm. formed us and made us make some of the decisions that we have made as adults, whether we knew it or not. And so for me, that was certainly true for a long time. I acted in certain ways and I acted out in certain ways and I had no idea. I didn't even know I was doing it based on something that had happened to me. And it took a long time to, to learn that. It took me a long time to then deal with that after I learned about it. In many ways, I'm still dealing with it. I'm always interested in that, but I thought this one really had some almost delicious little parts. There were some good and movies. Yeah. The, of course, anytime Guinan is involved in anything, no matter who <laughs> plays her, it's great. And I was really intrigued about the Allurian ritual she used to summon Q. And that led to kind of a dialogue between her and Q essentially saying, oh, we haven't met yet. Telling the younger Guinan that, obviously implying they had, but we know they had from TNG. And that the actually Q and the Illurians, the Q, the continuum and the Illurians were enemies for a long time. And they didn't have a real hot shooting war, but they had a cold war. By the time it got to TNG, there was no, they clearly weren't friends, but they at least tolerated each other. And Guinan could talk about Q dispassionately in a way she really couldn't talk about the Borg because of what the Borg had done to her. I was really intrigued by that whole part, learning more about Guinan and her people. And then we get the introduction of this FBI agent who I had thought was just a comic relief character. At least he was funny. Like he was a Yeah, Joe Friday in the (laughs) 21st century. And he really, I think, plays an important role as we go forward. So I was really in, intrigued by that. And then the last thing was we begin to see, maybe we've seen it all along, the romance between Rios and Teresa. I love them. They're a great but couple. They were like uh, Kirk and Jillian in Star Trek IV in many ways, I thought. so, And that was pretty cool to see them together. And as in all relationships, it's always the guy who's, oh, really? I just, has that been going on all along? I just figured it out. Like, so I tell my wife, why do you speak to me as if I'm a child? And she goes, I wonder. I wonder what it could yeah. be, honey. I loved uh, I did love the moment of the kind of reveal when she's absolutely livid that they have snuck into her clinic and are using it to perform procedures unknown. And then sees the tricorder beaming into Rios's hand and is just, excuse me, what now? But then at the very end, when they get to go on the ship, and it's, I thought that was a great moment. Yeah, I love that whole part of it. And as you were saying with the, when Ganon was explaining how Alorians think about time, that metaphor of time in the bottle, a moment of time captured and able to be recalled, I thought that was just a a beautiful idea. So I I did that too. And I thought with the FBI agent right at the end, one of my first thoughts was that he was actually, he was a time cop rather than an Earth of that time, three letter acronym employee guy. And I looked him up and he has actually played a time cop on Star Trek. He was in Voyager, I think, a guy in Dead, but yeah, as an actual time agency enforcer. So I thought that was interesting. Great choice for a character and uh, his delivery was great. Yeah, I thought he, he was one of the highlights of the episode for me, I think. So uh, I, I get, I'm not sure this was a filler episode, but it did slow down to tell us a lot of different things, but it gave us sort of these delicious little crumbs little or moments. eggs or cookies or moments <laughs> that makes this series so and mm-hmm. why we wanted to talk about it. What about the reveal of Talon? This is the episode she reveals she's yes. a Romulan. And I had thought this meant she was Laris 
ancestor, although perhaps it wasn't that clear. Any thoughts on that one way or the other? No, so I definitely hit down the issues of Romulan after now. I think it, Picard said, oh, you must be an ancestor of this Romulan I know in my time. I thought the demonstration of her technology was as interesting as anything else, and therefore the technology of the supervisors and the power that they have to influence how things look, how things appear. But beyond that, I didn't see too much of it beyond that yet. I think we'll have to see what happens next. I hope our listeners will stick around for the final episode, at least on this particular podcast, Episode 8, Mercy. I am Tom Fox. And I'm Megan Doherty. See you next time. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Because That's What Heroes Do. If you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you will subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever great podcasts are listened to. I hope you'll join Megan and I next time where we take up Picard Season 3, Episode 8. Because That's What Heroes Do is now the award-winning Because That's What Heroes Do is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.